So when people tell you that gardening isn't hard work, it's not a real workout, they don't know what the heck they're talking about because I just moved, I'm not exaggerating, probably a ton of dirt the last few days and hundreds of pounds of wood chips, easy, easy. And uh, my arms are so sore and pumped, it's ridiculous because you know, I've gotten fat and lazy and just don't work out like I did when I was young. And this is the first real continuous workout I've had where I'm out there every other day doing it. And uh, man, it's crazy how much better you get in shape. Like my muscles are popping back out and, and they're like there and I go to bed and I'm like, whoa, where'd these come from? And you know, it's, it's like, you remember me? <laughs> they're, they're still there. They're just hiding. They've been dormant. So grinding's real, real work. Don't let people say it isn't. Anyway, you're here to talk about another topic i believe and i'll show you at the end of this video what i've been up to in the in the garden today but we're going to talk about how uh the un is actually warning that there might be a food shortage coming and especially how that affects certain countries and i've been sitting here if you've been watching my channel you know i'm like get ready get ready get ready get ready and i don't want to be the guy that cries wolf but you know if i'm wrong you got some food and you bought it before the inflation prices hit and it's like buying everything on sale. If I'm right, you're taking care of your family and being responsible. So stock up, start a garden. Let's get into this. When something gets into the mainstream media, which obviously we call the lamestream media, all of a sudden it legitimizes it to people. I love my dad and I know he's watching, uh, but sometimes he doesn't believe a lot of the stuff I post unless it's like, I didn't see that on CNN or... You know, why haven't I heard about this? When it hits the lamestream media, it is almost too late. Like, can you imagine if the Associated Press picks up this article and pushes it out far and why? People will lose their minds and think, oh my gosh, I have to go out and buy everything I can. It'll panic buy. So they, they purposely kind of keep this stuff quiet until they have to talk about it. But CNN's starting to talk about it. When it gets out there, it's almost too late. So please go get your stuff today. Uh, let me take you through some articles I found and stuff you need to know what's going on. And we'll talk more about this uh, UN warning and what it means. So hang in there with me. So the UN is starting to warn that something's going to happen because of all the border problems. And, you know, people that actually might ship stuff are getting sick. Uh, a lot of countries who produce food don't want to ship it uh, because they think their countries need it. And I will uh, post a link to the article so you can read it more. But what the more interesting thing was, I forgot how that most island countries are going to be in the worst shape because they import most of their food. Like, look at this. Tonga is like 43% of what comes in. So they're going to be in big trouble. The issue um, I have is also here in the U.S. that I've already been told there's rationing in Hawaii. We know someone with a daughter in Hawaii that they already locked down the stores there where, you know, uh, you're only allowed to buy one thing of this or one thing of that. So I forgot the island countries. I, I kind of, my heart goes out to those guys. I will also put this out there, though, but, you know, some of these, uh, like Tonga, I think is the fattest country in the world. A lot of these island countries, the Pacific Islands, uh, have major obesity issues. Same with the U.S. I think it's two-thirds are obese here. So we got a little more padding. You know, people aren't going to be starving in the streets necessarily, but I, I do worry about them. Although the U.S. is not really talking about the food shortage yet, the signs are everywhere that there's a problem because this is a screenshot from uh, a California food bank where they basically fed thousands of people on the side in a stadium. Here's 10,000 people showed up in San Antonio to get food from a food bank. It was, look at the parking lot of this. People waited hours and hours and hours. That's, we're not even a month in, well, maybe a little more than a month into this, and this is what's happening already. 10,000 people. This just gives you a little glimpse of how unprepared people are, that that's just starting. But it's not just in Texas. Here's in Florida. Although I have to admit, sometimes when you clip something, the complete inappropriate ad is on top. There's no monster attacking Florida, but that kind of made me giggle. Anyway, let's go around, though. This is more in Texas, Fort Worth. They're just giving away tons of food. Los Angeles, food stretches for miles. Yeah. Pennsylvania, they also, miles long of cars. 
remember this is just starting and there are red flags everywhere so you got to take your gardening serious and start growing some food so i love you guys and uh you know i want you to just take it serious and prepare uh let me show you what i'm doing in the in the survival garden today so remember i'm going from like a pleasure garden where i just grew some stuff for fun to trying to maximize my space and, and grow food so some of the dirt i salvaged from the potato garden i had a lot of dirt left over uh in the rocks you'll see what i do with the rocks and I expanded the beds that already exist. Now these beds are about three to four years old of wood chips. So you'll take a good look at them and uh, get a better idea. And you'll see that they are grown over with weeds because I did not protect the edges good. So I'm actually weeding it. Ugh. You almost never have to weed a, weed a wood chip garden that's set up correctly. But this is an example of an incorrectly one set up. I just got lazy and didn't do it, I guess. I forgot about it. So I've doubled the size of this bed. Uh, I did the same thing. You'll see I laid down cardboard, but this time you see how I have it going past the rock edges. So this is what I do with all the rock we dig up in the soil and uh, the stuff. I just keep it and use it to, as a, a bed. But you can see here, these rocks are all grown over because no cardboard. I just thought at the time the rocks were big enough to hold it back and I was wrong. So I have to go around and dig all that out. Now the good news is because these wood chips are about three to four years old, this stuff comes up pretty easy. But it still will take me a good hour or two to come through here and pull all this grass out. Which it could have been prevented easily if I had just extended the cardboard like this. So make sure you're doing that. I'll take you through. This is probably going to be where I grow peas. I've got this pea tower here. Um, and, and some lattice stuff for peas. And then I'll probably, I don't know, maybe beans or... Uh, We'll see. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe he's a little squash. But I'll, I'll let you know when I put it in. Anyway, hang with me. I'll give you an update every few days. I forgot to mention, um, you know, obviously this garden's not done. I've got to put about, I'm going to put about five to six inches of chips on this. I still have some chips, plenty of chips. And uh, I'm going to also re-chip this garden. I got really busy last year and neglected this garden, and you can tell. So I'm going to have to take it back. I'm going to put a few inches of wood chips over this, smother out everything but the perennials, and uh, hopefully that'll help with some of the weeding too. But when you put new wood chips, remember, you want to lay them on the soil. Do not mix them in the soil. So I will just add to these ones. The stuff under this soil is premium. I don't like to disturb it because it has a fungus network set up and worms and all kinds of stuff. So I rarely touch the wood chips if I, unless I have to. Um, so I would dig it up. If I dig it up, I'll show you guys what it looks like. But anyway, so obviously this garden isn't done, and I'll show you a picture when it's finished. Some good news uh, for you guys following the channel is I keep telling you get seed potatoes. They are actually in. Um, these ones I got at Walmart. They're GMO free. Obviously, I don't really like buying stuff from Walmart, but this is all I can find at the moment. And what I'm going with is, remember, you want to try to go with uh, reds and uh, russets. Those are kind of the thicker skins. They're more resistant to uh, the uh, scabbing. But all I could also find was this harvest blend. So there might be a few scabby ones in there, but this is what I have. Now, some of you guys are saying, uh, but you have a whole bucket of potatoes. Yes, I do. I do have this bucket right here. And this is a bunch of starter potatoes. But here's the thing. I got those potatoes from a guy who I know has scab. Some of those potatoes have scab. So if I put those into my brand new garden, I'm introducing that bacteria into my garden. And it's fine if that's all I have, but I really don't want to do that. The reason I'm getting seed potatoes instead is um, because they are supposed to be disease free. Are they all the time? I don't know. But... This one I got at Tractor Supply, so go to Tractor Supply, you still get it. I got the last few bags here where I live, but they're out right now. Agway's supposed to get them next week, but Walmart, I forgot Walmart actually has some. Um, I bought the last of the reds, and there's a few of variety packs left there. But if you happen to be going out and, you know, braving it, seed potatoes are out. Go get them. If you listen closely, you can hear a cat bird. Come on. Anyway, um, 
So if you hear that screaming, that's a catbird if you never heard one. My favorite bird, imagine that. So what we're gonna do, <laughs> Uh, I wanted to talk to you about why I'm still having a lot of issues with YouTube and if you want to support the channel there's two ways obviously I still have my Amazon links in the description and that doesn't cost you anything it just takes her a second or two to remember you have to do it before you go on Amazon so like you can't open Amazon come back go through my link and it'll work you have to go through my link to go to Amazon so if you're gonna do some shopping for your garden I'd appreciate it it really helps the channel and it doesn't cost you anything extra the other way is, you know, I do those wood carvings and I'll tack on a little thing of what I've done recently here. Uh, if you're interested in a wood carving, it'll help get me through because pretty much my practice is uh, dead closed right now and uh, I'm struggling. Every dollar helps right now. So I'd appreciate it and I'll keep making these videos for you. One other thing is remember, I'm trying to get away from YouTube. I've been trying for years, but I'm getting a lot more serious about it. So if you go over to BitChute, or uh, Brighton is where I'm publishing these to. They get these videos a day or two before YouTube. So if you want to go over there and sign up, I'll put the links in the description. And uh, I'd appreciate you signing up over there and support me and help me get off YouTube. Anyway, thank you guys. Hang in there together. Thanks for watching. I appreciate uh, you guys sticking with me. I have had a pretty rough time with all that's going on in the world. Uh, for you guys to know that I disappeared for a while because I was trying to start a practice. and Just like the worst time ever to start a practice. Uh, and patients have pretty much almost dropped to nothing. So I'm doing what I can just to stay afloat. So if you guys also see me sometimes carve wood art here. I'm kind of a beginner wood carver. But if any of you guys want to buy any of this, I'm just trying to... Uh, because the YouTube has completely cut my money. It's, it's dropped it for about 80% in the last two months. So with my job gone and that gone, I'm looking to do what I can to hustle just to keep things afloat. So I'm selling these wood pieces. Little stuff like this, like here's that paper moon I carved. Um, the vintage paper moon. Most of my stuff glows in the dark. So you'll see that just about every piece I sell glows in the dark. And they're almost all candlesticks at this size. Anything you fit in your hand, you will, there's a little hole in the top to, to burn a candle. And uh, you can get a better idea. There's like, you know, mushroom glow in the dark. But you'll see the hole there. You can see a little bit of me working on this guy. Anyway, um, these run about 35 bucks, And you can request I'll make something like it most of these uh, a few of these I still have for sale if you want but I don't have like an Etsy page or anything like there's a, a witch's knot that glows in the dark uh, these medium these small pieces run about 35 bucks once we jump up to medium pieces like this the medium pieces run anywhere from uh, 50 bucks up to 80 depending on how elaborate the uh, like something like this would be probably 55 bucks then something oh and he glows in the dark here's his other half but something like this where i've again a wall hanger something like this probably around 50 bucks but this guy has a protective symbol in his beard i carved in that takes a long time and that's protection against illness and disease and i actually put it in my office you'll see it in the corner there under the lamp something like that's uh about usually about 80 dollars and then you go up to the large sizes they run about a hundred dollars and they're usually wall hangers then I go up to the totems the really larger sizes and this thing has multiple faces on it it takes me a very long time there's four different faces on this thing something like this would be about 150 bucks now none of this includes shipping and we'll have to talk about shipping but if you're interested you want to help keep me afloat uh, either use the Amazon link below or consider buying a wood piece just leave a comment and I'll send you an email and we can talk and I'll make you a custom one Lastly, I've been trying for years to get off YouTube. It's like uh, being in a relationship with an abusive spouse or something. So you will find out that I've been publishing my videos a day or two early over at BitChute and Brighton. Uh, and if you're interested, sign up over there and check it out. If not, you can wait for the videos here. I'll still put them up here. Love you guys. Thanks so much for the support.